Thank you for joining me on today's episode of Trending News on Atlantic TV, a platform where we give you the latest in news, sports, entertainment, and business. I'll be right back after this short break. Please stay tuned. On to our first breaking news story. FG backtracks suspend planned removal of petrol subsidy. The federal government of Nigeria has backed down on its plans to remove petrol subsidy. Hajia Zainab Ahmed, Minister of Finance, announced this when she appeared before National Assembly members on Monday. Temi Perceva, Minister of State for Petroleum Resources and representative of oil companies, attended the meeting chaired by the Senate President Ahmed Lawa. Ahmed said the government reconsidered its decision to remove subsidy after the 2022 budget was passed. On to our next story, Ganduje, I won't waste time in signing that warrant of Hanifa's killer. Governor Abdullahi Ganduji of Kanu State has said he will waste no time to sign the death warrant of Abdumalik Tanko if it is brought before him. Tanko, the proprietor of Noble Kids Academy in Nasara local government area of Kanu, had confessed to killing five-year-old Hanifa Abubakar, a pupil he abducted in December. The governor on Monday promised to abide by the constitutional provision to assert to the death sentence of Tanko in the event that it is passed by the court. Still staying in Kano, Kano state government have revoked private schools' licenses. The Kano state government has revoked the licenses of all private schools in the state. The action is in line with its intention to re-evaluate the private school sector in the state after the killing of Hanifa Abubakar. Nigeria has world highest rate of out-of-school children, UNICEF. The United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, has said that 10.5 million children are out of schools in Nigeria, which is the highest in the world. UNICEF representative in Nigeria, Peter Hawkins, disclosed this in a statement while commemorating the International Day of Education. Hawkins, however, commended the Nigerian government for their pledge to increase the annual domestic education expenditure in the country by 50% over the next two years and by 100% in the year 2025. Former Governor of Delta State James Ibori visited ex-Niger Delta warlord government Ekwemo Polo, alias Tompolo, at the Riverside Oparazo Community Traditional Headquarters of Bamaturu Kingdom in Wari's Southwest local government area of Delta State at the weekend. The reason for the meeting has not been made public, but coming barely 48 hours after the cackles of the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, and the party's eye-catching mega rally at Asaba in the last four days, the meeting of both political and ex-militant leaders caused a stir in the state's political circle. Police arrest four assailants of Lady who criticized Borneo Rep. The police in Borneo State have arrested four suspects in connection with an assault on a lady, Fadila Abdurrahman, for criticizing a lawmaker on Facebook. The commissioner of police, CP Abu Umar, who disclosed this on Monday while briefing newsmen, explained that the Inspector General of Police, IGP Usman Akali Baba, and Governor of Borneo State, Professor Baba Ghana Umara Zulum, were modified by the assault. CP Umar said the attack on the lady, which went viral on social media, was a case of criminal conspiracy, assault, causing harm, mischief, possession of weapons, toggery, and theft. On to the entertainment world. Mercy Aigbe marries ex-husband's friend. Top Nollywood actress Mercy Aigbe has remarried after four years of separation from her former husband, Otumba Larry. The actress made the revelation on Sunday, January 23, 2022, to celebrate the birthday of her new hobby, who goes by the name of Kazim Adetoti, popularly known as Adekar's Productions in the Yoruba movie circle. In reaction to Mercy Ayigbe marriage, the former husband posted a picture of himself, the actress, and the new husband of the actress to tell the world the man the actress just married used to be his friend. Still on entertainment news, BB Ninja Jackie B's mother, Grace Bent, sues FFK's ex-wife Precious Chiwendu for defamation. 
Mother of former BB Ninja Shine Your Eye housemate Jackie B, Grace Bent has dragged precious Chuendu, a strange wife of former aviation minister Femi Fani Kayode, to the Federal High Court in Abuja over alleged defamation of character. Reports have it that Chuendu, an ex-beauty queen, had, through her social media handle, accused Bent of using the police to intimidate her with regards to the feud between her and her former husband. On to international news, staying in the African continent, coup d'etat in Burkina Faso as army disposes the government. A coup has taken place in Burkina Faso with the army announcing the dismissal of the government in the West African country. The army announced in a televised broadcast Monday night that it has disposed President Kabware, suspended the constitution, dissolved the government and the National Assembly, and also closed the borders of the country. On to business news. Inflation. Money supply rise 16.5% to 43.9 trillion naira. Reflecting the increasing need of Nigerians for cash to cope with the persistent increase in prices of goods and services, money supply to the economy rose by 16.5% in 2021 to 43.95 trillion naira overshooting the 9.9% target of the Central Bank of Nigeria for the year. Still on business news, FG to spend 94% of 2022 revenue on debt servicing, report projects. Government will borrow 8 trillion naira to fund budget. A global research and credit rating institution estimates that Nigeria will incur 4.7 trillion naira on debt servicing this year. The amount is 94% of 5 trillion naira revenue projected for the country. The projection is 18% point above last year's 76% per debt to revenue ratio. Moving on to sports. AFCON 2021 update. Cameroon Gambia qualify for quarter finals after victories over Camaros and Guinea. Guinea's fairy tale continue at the ongoing African Cup of Nations as a lowly ranked team shocked their more illustrious opponent, Guinea, 1-0 on Monday evening to qualify for the next stage of the AFCON competition. The hero was Musa Barrow, whose strike in the 71st minute was enough to take the Gambians to the next stage of the competition. Meanwhile, in the second round of 16, host nation Cameroon survived the scare of 10-man Camaros to win 2-1 for a place in the quarter finals. The indomitable Lions will now face Diane Killers Gambia in one of the quarterfinal matches over the weekend. Moving away from sports, onto some health reports. Daily COVID-19 tracker, 241 new cases confirmed and two dead have been recorded in Nigeria. Nigeria currently has a total number of 252,428 cases with about 22,298 active cases, bringing the total number of discharged cases to about 227,004, with a total death rate of 3,126 so far. Please ensure to wear your face mask, wash your hands regularly, and by all means, avoid overcrowded places. You can do well to follow us on all our social media handles now displaying on your screen. Thank you for joining me. Until I come your way again next time, do stay safe.